This is part two of the lecture for week number five of CM 502, working with the church governance system. We're going to talk about what church boards do. Every nominating committee has had this question. What is expected? What do we do? What's our job? If you ask church boards to describe their job description, they would say something like, well, we do the business of the church, but often without much specificity as to the particular business that they do and how they go about doing that business. They see themselves as primarily permission-giving bodies with a modicum of planning projects that somebody else isn't planning or events and a certain amount of problem solving because it can't be avoided. One of the things a pastor or ministry leader is wise to use their time and energy in is to equip the board to do its business, which begins by learning and defining what that business is. Now, under the stewardship of leadership, we discuss the overall leadership principles that apply to anyone involved in church leadership, and they are particularly incumbent upon church boards. For having said that, however, I want to focus more on organizational specifics, what a church board does. And we have to remember that a church is both the servant of Jesus Christ, but in our culture, it is a not-for-profit organization. And although Christ must come, always come first, I'm also reminded of the scripture that says, render unto Caesar what is Caesar, and unto God what is God's. One of the requirements of maintaining a not-profit status is to have an oversight board a board that pays attention to what's going on, oversees it, if you will, doesn't just inspect it, but directs it as well. Church boards are responsible for ensuring that the ministry fulfills, first of all, its core mission. That's how we render unto God what is God's. And this is done by developing strategy, monitoring performance, and ensuring that there's church financial accountability. If you are not developing strategy, whatever happens is gonna happen. If you're not monitoring a performance, we go back to what Colin said, the evaluation that is necessary to be successful is absent. And a church, as we're gonna talk about next week, does not have unlimited financial resources. And what resources we have, both morally, spiritually, and legally, the church board is responsible to see that the finances are, and the people who handle the finances are accountable. Strong board governance makes certain a meaningful mission is implemented effectively. Effective boards have an impact on the long-term viability of that organization, but they have a vested interest in how the church implements the strategy in achieving its mission. They want to make sure that their leadership helps shape what happens, and they want to also make sure that they do what is necessary to make sure it's successful, to not just throw it out there and hope it gets done. This is done in part by uh, meeting on a regular basis while actively overseeing the key operations, which are the church budget oversight, the top leader uh, performance evaluation and uh, the performance of the strategic leaders of the church. And of course, always to make sure that we are in legal compliance. Now, there are many lists here. I'm going to use just one to, as, as illustrative of what I'm trying to say, but here are church board responsibilities. And number one, after trying to discern God's will, is do strategic planning. The board is responsible for articulating the church's core mission and developing strategy plan to achieve it. This is done through formal strategic planning process, which includes the development of what we've talked about in terms of mission, vision, and value statements, and it also oversees the development of operational goals that make out steps for achieving that mission. You have to have a plan. Number two, church boards are responsible to manage performance. The board is responsible for monitoring and holding leadership accountable for achieving that group's results. I'm not just talking about the staff, but even the other leaders as well. And this is by, done by developing uh, regularly exploring church goals, holding the top leaders responsible by providing them with some authoritative boundaries for achieving goals. In other words, for leaders to know what am I allowed to do and not allowed to do, but once we have set that boundary, let them do what they're supposed to do. For example, the executive pastor, if you have one, should understand the boundaries of their authority for making tactical decisions about the day-to-day -day operations of the ministry. 
And if they don't do that, they're held accountable for failing. If they overstep that, you have to pull them back. The third is financial oversight. The board is responsible for the organization's responsible stewardship, its financial accountability, and to make sure it doesn't go insolvent, that it has the resources necessary to meet its obligations. People don't always want to talk about money, or sometimes churches talk too much about money, but you need to make sure that you're behaving in a responsible way, accountable to the mission God has given you, following the strategies and policies that you know will ensure that it is done decently and in good order. Now, this is done by approving and overseeing an annual budget. This provide, includes providing input and direction into the strategy and priority of spending, as well as ensuring the strategy set forth has the financial resources resources for implementation. Uh, this financial oversight includes identifying independent outside auditors to perform occasional audits to ensure good practices and compliance with state and federal laws. You may have some people within the church who can do that and they could do it more regularly, but every once in a while it's just worth bringing somebody from outside objectively without the ties who can make sure that you're still complying. Number four, you manage compensation. The church board helps to identify salaries, how we're going to pay people, what is fair to pay for people, benefits, etc. Number five is to ensure legal compliance. Church boards are responsible for adhering to the laws that govern not-for-profit organizations. And this includes the duties of care, loyalty, and obedience, which is the board's responsibility to participate in decision-making and good use good judgment. Set aside their personal interests to ensure the organization's interests are kept and ensures that the church stays true to its core mission by applying, complying with its governing laws and those other governing laws that apply to the church. Number six is you monitor conflict of interest. You know, the smaller the church, uh, people's decisions or board decisions often reflect what, what uh, families desire without being at attention to the fact that some desires may actually undermine the uh, integrity of the organization or the appearance of integrity. One of the things that the board tries to do is to make sure that it has policies and systems that place in place to assure that when there's something is coming up, there's full disclosure of any potential conflicts and they're dealt with. Number seven, it is gonna sound simple, but it's essential. They maintain the supporting documents and board records. The board, they may designate people to do this, but the board legally is responsible and ecclesiastically is responsible for ensuring all board records are kept, including board minutes, mission statements, values, vision statements, value statements, the church bylaws, articles of incorporation, and any policies that govern the board function. And then eighth, and finally in this sense, is the whole idea of board training. You know, strong boards don't want to, to control things forever. They want to ensure that there are new board members that come along. And they want to make sure that new board members are provided the appropriate orientation and training in their role. So they become talent scouts of people that they can start to bring into the system, sometimes through projects, sometimes through committees. But they also understand that these persons need to be educated in the mission of the church, its core values, and also the ways that the church does its operations. This includes a review occasionally of your, of your church documents, your job descriptions and responsibilities, and again, always understanding the legal responsibilities of board members. And uh, you can uh, sometimes have these done by outside sources, but you need to provide training. Anyone who has chosen to be a part of a church board should recognize that it is an honor and an incredible responsibility that comes with that role. Having a good understanding of role responsibilities that come with role responsibilities coupled with thorough training is a great way to get a board member equipped to serve the church and the church will be served well. We're going to stop the lecture at this point. We're going to go on in the next lecture to talk about mission alignment and rules that effective boards try to live by. Thank you.